Thank you very much for inviting me to this workshop. It is a pleasure to present our work. Unwanted immune response is one of the major challenges of therapeutic protein development. Some patients may develop anti-drug antibodies, which form immune complex with the drug and impact exposure. The figure shows pharmacokinetic time profiles for subjects who are ADA positive and those who do not produce detectable anti-drug antibodies. A number of computational tools are used to inform compound selection by predicting propensity of protein sequence to induce immune response. The quantitative systems pharmacology approach focuses not only on incidence of immunogenicity, but also on the impact of anti-drug antibodies on pharmacokinetics. This is important because interaction of the drug with immune system is a dynamic process and ADS, DAs may have different impact on the drug at different doses and different time points. The plot shows the case where immune response significantly impacts PK. However, the drug concentration in ADA positive patients may still be within therapeutic window. Exposures within therapeutic window may be achievable by change of the dose or dosing interval. Also, the impact on PK is manifested to the full extent only at the later time points. Short, first in human trial may not detect ADAs or their impact on PK. In some cases, formation of immune complex led to increase rather than decrease of compound half-life. Therefore, we believe that it is important to predict not only propensity of the compound to induce immune response, but also the full time profile of pharmacokinetics and ADA concentration. The QSP approach to immunogenicity is strongly motivated by the success of physiologically based pharmacokinetics, a mechanistic modeling of PK. The PVPK simulation is commonly featured in regulatory submissions and in several applications such as drug-drug interactions may be submitted in lieu of clinical trial. Sertara's SimSIP simulator, one of the available PBPK tools, impacted about 200 label claims in a wide range of therapeutic areas. The QSP approach, which I will present on the following slides, integrates PBPK model for biologics with mechanistic model of antibody immune response to simulate impact of immunogenicity on compound PK. Similarly to PBPK, the immunogenicity is not specific to a particular compound or therapeutic area, but rather is of general interest in all biologics drug development. Therefore, it makes perfect sense for the companies to pull resources and create a tool for modeling and simulation of immunogenicity, which each of the companies would then apply in their in-house projects. Following way of working tested in our SimSim consortium, we established consortium of six companies to develop IG Simulator a tool for mechanistic modeling and simulation of therapeutic protein immunogenicity and impact of anti-drug antibodies on pharmacokinetics. This is short summary of our IG model development. We started with the model of Chen, Hickling and Vicini contributed by Pfizer. This model was introduced by other speakers in this session. First, we translated the model to a bespoke software platform used for both model development and simulation. Then we replaced pharmacokinetic model with a general minimal PBPK model of therapeutic proteins. Following this, we also divided one compartment immune system model into lymph node, vascular blood and peripheral blood. Compartmentalization allows more realistic modeling of key immune system events happening in lymph node 
and biomarker concentrations observed in peripheral blood. Model development was followed by validation and refinement. We collected literature data on 15 compounds and created clinical case studies. Recent release of IG Simulator version 4 provides model validated with these case studies in a bespoke software tool. Current effort focuses on using the model to extrapolate from ex vivo assays and further validation and software qualification. This is summary of the biological scope of the model and biological process map as seen by the user in our software. The model contains naive memory and defector T cells and B cells in relevant physiological compartments. We model antigen presentation and dendritic cells. The model explicitly accounts for IgM and IgG anti-drug antibodies and formation of immune complexes. We model cell circulation, antibody and compound distribution between compartments. We have detailed model of antigen presentation accounting for HLA genotype and the model of antibody affinity maturation. The IG model is used for virtual trial simulation. A virtual subject is a single instance of the model parameters and variable initial conditions. We create a sample of subjects by drawing parameter values from biologically plausible distributions. On this stage, we are able to integrate variety of different inputs, such as predicted or experimentally identified T cell epitopes and binding constants, HLA genetics, and literature-based physiological parameter distributions. The parameters may be specific to special populations or even individuals, so-called virtual twin simulations. Having established a sample of virtual subjects, we run simulation for each of them and record compound and ADA time profiles. These are then analyzed in exactly the same way as clinical data would be analyzed. However, we can of course output any other variable of our model providing insight into biomarkers which may be more difficult to measure. The IG model, together with model calibration and simulation tools, are delivered to the user in a bespoke IG simulator software qualified for this purpose. The user can access the model through modular biological process map interface, providing editor for development of compound specific extensions. ODEs and parameters can be browsed in a tabular format with search interface. We provide graphics user interface supporting formulation of subject classification criteria based on ADA and compound concentration thresholds. Last but not least, we provide formatted Excel output with plots, as well as CSV files and binary database with virtual trial simulation results. The model can be fully exported to MATLAB and R, and we also provide interaction with our SimSIP simulator. I will now briefly present example case studies. This is clinical trial of Adalimumab, which we use to calibrate our model. We run virtual clinical trial with 40 mg of adalimumab administered every three weeks for three years. We used clinical subject classification criterion based on both ADA and compound threshold to define ADA positive subjects. Fever ADA threshold was used to subdivide positive subjects into strong and medium responders. The plots show comparison of median PK profiles and incidence curves with clinical data and example spaghetti plot with ADA profiles for individual subjects. We conclude that IG simulator can accurately reproduce both incidence of immunogenicity at different time points of the trial, as well as the impact on PK. 
This case study shows prediction rather than calibration. We calibrated model with Adalimumab and Natalizumab case studies. We then applied the model without further calibration to simulate clinical trial of, bo of Bococizumab. The IG simulator correctly predicts that Bococizumab is a compound with considerable incidence of immunogenicity and that anti-drug antibodies affect PK. While quantitative accuracy of predictions is slightly worse than in calibration, we believe that this is very useful given that it could be obtained before first in human clinical trial. In the first iteration of model calibration and validation, we used 15 case studies. We found that it is easier to predict whether there will be statistically significant impact of immunogenicity on PK than to predict incidence of Ig. This is to large extent due to lack of standard assays and criteria for subject classification and poor reporting of the criteria used in clinical papers. Encouraged by the results of PK predictions, we analyzed reasons for discrepancies refined the model accordingly and proceeded to second iteration of case studies. In second iteration, we also investigated impact of using data from ex vivo assays. These assays are, are now frequently conducted before compound is administered to patients. In first iteration of model validation, we determined compound specific parameters using bioinformatics alone. NetMHC to PAN was used to predict T cell epitopes and binding constants. BLAST was used to identify parts of the molecules which are not self. In second iteration, we used T cell epitopes and frequencies of antigen specific T cells experimentally identified from MHC-associated peptide proteomics and T-cell proliferation assays. These are results of second iteration, which so far co covered 12 compounds. We found that incorporation of compound-specific parameters derived from ex vivo data does improve model performance. In particular, Experimentally determined fraction of antigen specific T cells improves prediction of Ig incidence. We also identified very informative, difficult case of ustekinumab. The virtual trial simulation of ustekinumab predicts very rapid changes of PK and ADA concentration in relation to the number of sampling points used in the trial. This makes analysis of immunogenicity very sensitive to the choice of sampling points. The plot on the left shows full simulated time profiles. Other plots show analysis based on sampling points differing by just two weeks in one of the time points. We believe that simulation of the immune response can be very insightful for interpretation of observed data, as well as for the selection of sampling point, points and sample sizes required to observe immunogenicity if it is indeed present. We expect that clinical trial design will be important application of IG simulator. We are currently working on making full use of ex vivo assays, which are increasingly being conducted as a part of biologics development pipeline. We created mechanistic model of T cell proliferation assay, which is fully consistent with our clinical IG model. The scope of this model is very similar to TC Pro model published by FDA team, but we retain detailed model of antigen presentation. We will use this relatively sim small model to infer parameters from T cell proliferation assays and then use these parameters in prediction of clinical outcomes. To achieve this aim, we implemented different types of T cell proliferation assays commonly used in industry. 
Here, we extensively use data sets compiled by TC Pro team, as well as many of their ideas on how to simulate these assays. We are very grateful to Dr. Yogurtsu for help. This slide shows that our model produces very similar results to TC Pro on two commonly used T cell proliferation assay platforms. We are currently testing our T cell proliferation assay model on data collected from for clinical compounds. Results shown here demonstrate that we can obtain good agreement with experimental data, provided that we use known frequencies of antigen specific T cells. We therefore expect that our model will be applicable to inference of the frequencies of antigen specific T cells from standard assays. In this quick summary, I focus so far on application of IG model for extrapolation from preclinical to clinical data. However, as the clinical program progresses, mechanistic model can be of course calibrated by clinical data, which would improve its quantitative accuracy. Calibrated model can then be used to make predictions for next stage of the program. In the ideal scenario, we would like IG model to become a companion of the compound, informing its development on every stage. First, predictions could be made based on the sequence. Subsequently, the model could be used to inform choices between small number of compounds for which ex vivo assays have been conducted and inform design of first in human trials. The model informed with first in human data can be then used to design larger trials and also to design dosing regimes and intervals, minimizing the impact of immunogenicity. In later stages of drug development, well-validated model can be applied to make extrapolations for special populations, such as groups with specific HLA genetics, age and disease groups. Finally, the model instantiated with individual patient data can be perhaps used, used in virtual trial simulations in precision medicine context. At the time of the pandemic, it is difficult not to mention that IG simulator contains general model of antibody immune response to protein antigen, which is applicable to prediction of desired immune response in vaccine development. We have already repurposed IG simulator to conduct virtual trials with COVID-19 vaccines. Similar to applications in IG, we simulate time profile of antibodies and other biomarkers of interest, such as, for example, memory cells. Dr. Sawamura will later talk about our collaborative work in this field. In summary, IG Simulator is a QSP platform composed of mechanistic model of therapeutic protein immunogenicity delivered in a bespoke software tool. The model has been developed by seven collaborating companies working together for five years and iteratively validated and refined with 15 literature-based case studies. We currently focus on improving extrapolation from ex vivo assays. We would like to use IG Simulator as a compound companion informed by data obtained at each stage of drug development and informing next stage. We are in fact already using it. Consortium members are currently applying IG Simulator version 4 to approximately 20 proprietary compounds and we are learning a lot from this. Our ambition is to work with regulators to qualify IG Simulator as a tool, informing immunogenicity assessment, interpretation and management throughout regulatory interaction. Again, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to present here. Finally, IG Simulator was developed by a large team of colleagues from science, 
software engineering and customer relationship teams in Certara. Also, IG Simulator would not have been developed without contribution from our consortium members. Thank you very much for listening to my talk and I will be happy to answer questions.